Louisiana COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force. Uh, we will first have our roll call from Ms. Gerald. Ms. Gerald, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, here we go. Dr. Sandra Brown. Here. Dr. Thomas Levise. Present. Dr. Mary Meg Brown. Here. Dr. Renato Banks. Senator Regina Barrow. Dr. Terry Davis. Here. Dr. Rebecca G. Ms. Emily Remington. Present. Ms. Okay. Ms. Carol. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute quickly enough. <laughs> no problem. I got. I have you present. Ms. Carol Smith. Dr. Ronnie Whitfield. Dr. Gary Wilkes. I'm here. Dr. Dame, Damian Ejigiri. Dr. Eric Van Hoom. Ms. Deleso Alford. Dr. Tavell Kendall. Representative Dustin Miller. Ms. Alma Stewart. Mr. Christopher Tyson. Dr. Derek Rivera's. Here. Dr. Corey Abair. Ms. Lenore Caroli. Dr. Keith Ferdinand. Here. Councilwoman Helena Marino. Councilwoman Cindy Wynn. Ms. Sadie Finkel. Dr. Alicia Bates. Dr. Janine Thomas. Here. Dr. Alicia Ann Fowler. Bates. Alicia Bates is here. I have you present. Thank you. Ms. Cindy Snyder. Dr. Leanne Fowler. Ms. Kathleen Tate. Here. Dr. Lisa Van Hoos. Ms. Shalina Davis. Mr. Michael McClanahan. Dr. Connie Arnold. Dr. Faye Grimsley. Ms. Erica Rogers. Mr. Frederick Thomas. Dr. Demetrius Porsche. Here. Ms. Judy Morris. Dr. Earl Benjamin Robinson. Dr. Peter Foss. Dr. Kathleen Kennedy. Here. Dr. Robert Maupin. Dr. Christy Anderson. Robert Maupin is here. Yes, sir. I have you present. Present. Okay, Dr. Takesha Davis. Present. Dr. Amanda Dumas. Here. Dr. Amy Lesson. I'm here. Dr. Ebony Price Haywood. Here. Dr. Margarita Escheveri. Present. Mr. Christian Engel. Ms. Tina Granger. Ms. Catherine Haywood, Reverend Theron Jackson, Mr. Rudy Macklin, Dr. Orlando McMeans. Present. Dr. Rhoda Reddix. Present. Okay. And Dr. Brown, we have special guests. Would you like to acknowledge them or you want me to call the roll to see if they're here? You can, you can call the roll. Okay. Dr. Cantor. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Allie Neal. Here. Okay. Assistant Secretary Kim Hood. I'm here, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Courtney Phillips. Mr. Mark you? Thomas. Present. Okay. Ms. Tanya Joyner. 
I think that's it, Dr. Brown. If I miss someone, please let me know. Uh, Daniel Sarpon is present. Oh, sorry, Dr. Sarpon. I have you present. Yeah, Peter Katzmarzik is here as well. Daniel. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Whitfield is here as well. Okay. Cindy Schneider in attendance. Yes, ma'am. You're listening to member supported. <laughs> is Simone here? Is Simone, uh, Simone Rambati on? I missed that whole list. I'm sorry, Dr. Brown. And Dr. Jacqueline Harris. I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. I have you. And just before we turn it over to Dr. Brown, uh, just a reminder for all of you um, to mute your phones. Also, if there are any other folks that join um, after the start of the meeting, if you would just go ahead and put your name in the chat box um, and Ms. Gerald will be able to get those names. Uh, we also wanna remind you that this is a public meeting. Therefore, we are accepting public comments. You can log your comments uh, at public underscore comments at sus.edu. Again, that's public underscore comments at sus.edu. Um, so again, we want to welcome you guys to this uh, today's meeting of the Louisiana COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force. Very glad to be here uh, with the group. And uh, we have a great meeting planned for us today. We have members of the Louisiana Department of Health and Hospitals who are with us today that are gonna bring us up to speed on what they're doing on the Bring Back Louisiana campaign, as well as also what we are doing to continue um, right, getting those numbers up for our COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, and then Dr. Brown and Dr. Lavise will lead us um, in some discussion to see how this task force will be able to uh, lend uh, our talents and time in trying to increase those numbers as well. Uh, so with that, Dr. Brown, we'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Dr. Williams, and welcome everyone um, again. We're very excited to have you here with us today. Uh, our agenda, as Dr. Williams stated, is centered all around LDH. And um, so we're looking forward to um, having them provide us with an update. Um, and then we'll um, plunge into a brainstorming session um, to address certain areas that we can um, as it relates to the COVID-19 uh, vaccine efforts. Um, Dr. Lavise, are you, you're here? I am here. Okay, a few words of wisdom before we plunge into uh -huh. our agenda. Sure, not, not too much to add. You know, we're at a critical point now where um, the, it seems that the demand is outstripping the supply um, and we need to uh, look at new strategies to deal with this new challenge that we're facing. So I'm looking forward to this conversation as we talk about how do we do this. All right, thank you. Um, we'll get started with an update on Bring Back Louisiana. And we have our Deputy Secretary, Mark Thomas uh, from LDH, and our Communications Director, Allie Neal from LDH, who will be providing us with an update on those efforts. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Uh, Mark Thomas, I'm gonna go ahead and start for the department and picking up where Dr. Lavis has um, uh, left off at in that uh, we recognize that there's a level of hesitancy out there uh, the uh, vaccines that are available do out, uh, uh, outstrip the, um, uh, the supply that's, that's there. So we have to be innovative and creative in our approach to um, uh, work with those persons who uh, may have some vaccination, uh, vaccine hesitancy and so forth. And so this is, um, I'll give you a presentation today on Sleeves Up, Bring Back Louisiana. This is the, governor, the governor's signature campaign on um, and strategy on, on reaching those hard to uh, reach communities, those persons who uh, have trouble accessing the vaccination. So I have David, uh, he's gonna be assisting me. So David, let's jump right in. Let's plunge in as, as the good doctor has <laughs> said, let's plunge in. And so uh, the first thing is our mission. Uh, many of you are already uh, aware of that. I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. It's reaching those underserved, uh, on the fence, hard to reach communities. And the goal of Bring Back Louisiana is to break down those, uh, those barriers. Our goals are very plain and, and, and simple, which is to increase awareness and build confidence 
provide safe spaces for folks to answer questions and get answers, amplify the support already in the communities that exist and allocate uh, COVID-19 vaccines to communities of concern to help eligible re residents get signed up. Let's go, Dave. So uh, we have, we've been working very hard. Want to give uh, major props to uh, Allie Neal. Uh, Allie has uh, been spearheading this, uh, this initiative, uh, got us a long way. And, and so right now I've been designated as the lead, but definitely uh, standing on uh, uh, tall shoulders and, and big shoes to, uh, to fill. Uh, Allie worked uh, real hard to work to get our uh, partners in place. So we have brought on the Medina group. Uh, this is Telly Medina and uh, his outreach lead is Joshua Hollins. Telly and Josh are the uh, project lead. So they're organizing uh, our community partners, those that are interfacing with this initiative. Uh, they're also working directly with uh, community partners. Some of you are on the line today to enlist you to use your political capital, use your scope of influence to reach some of these targeted uh, communities. So in instances where we don't have to reinvent the wheel, we don't want to. We want to work with uh, you folks here. Also, we've brought on uh, Louisiana Public Health Institute LPHI as our uh, data manager. And you will hear us talk about community-based organizations. Uh, LPHI is not only collecting data, but they're the ones who are managing and coordinating that group there. And then for our media uh, lead, we brought on the Bernie group. I'm gonna leave that part for Allie to talk about at, the, uh, at my conclusion. Let's go to the next one, David. So the, the, the model that we've used, uh, we've used the CDC Social Vulnerability Index to we looked at uh, data that we had on those areas that were at least uh, vaccinated. And we also knew that we needed to focus on communities of uh, color. Our uh, strategies and our events are uh, meant to meet the needs of each uh, respective community, recognizing that hesitancy is not just in communities of color, but there are rural conservative uh, communities. And so you should see that diversity in the outreach efforts that we have and who our canvassers are. Uh, we, we've been, uh, we're building this model to have the greatest impact with the entire uh, community. And of course, all of our outreach is leading to uh, targeted uh, pilot uh, vaccination events. So here's a list of uh, the Bring Back Louisiana partners. It is, uh, it's very robust, it's, it's, it's awesome. And thanks, some, it represents some of the work that you folks on the line do, as well as many other organizations. And it's the role of the Medina Group to reach out to each of these organizations and to come up with a strategy of how these folks will assist in our Bring Back Louisiana efforts. David. So one of the things we're real proud of, and it, it, it was quite a bit of a challenge, which was to get all of our uh, pilot uh, sites in place. And so real proud to report today that all of the sites have been chosen, all of the dates have been set, all of the times have been set and there's live registration uh, available for these sites. And so as you uh, take this PowerPoint and David will make it available to you, as you take it, you will find that we will begin today with some of our vaccination events. So about half of the events are taking place this weekend. The other half will be taking place uh, next weekend. And uh, even as we're doing these events, we're planning for uh, what the future looks like. We're, we're gonna be in this for the long haul, David. And so this is just a, a simple timeline of uh, which captures, you know, the work that we've been doing uh, in past. Uh, this is to keep us accountable. And but also it outlines where we're going. And so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have events this week, we have events next weekend. But while we're having these events, we're meeting with our community based organizations, our regional medical directors, our partners to look at where would be the next areas that we want to target. So we used our model to get these pilot sites, but we wanna have conversations on how we move forward. Uh, in, um, this is, uh, these are the Bring Back Louisiana activities. This is what we call, uh, or what, what someone called earlier today, this is our ground game. This is our ground game. So in every region across the state, we have teams that are out, uh, I think about uh, 400 uh, that are uh, uh, canvassing, door knocking, uh, in, in these communities that we are targeting. They're also uh, phone banking. So uh, placing uh, thousands of phone calls to 
those persons who reside in those areas. We're doing mass texting. And so we're working uh, to send out mass text. Some of you may receive texts from the governor. That's through what is called the rave system when he gives COVID updates and so forth. We're working to do the same thing in all of these uh, communities. We're also reaching into barbershops, beauty salons, um, and, um, and restaurants. Okay, and then I'll leave the media for Allie to cover. Dave, let's go to the next page because that also uh, talks about uh, our faith-based strategy. And so what we're doing is we're identifying faith leads and, and we have uh, today identified faith leads who will help us uh, reach into our faith-based uh, communities. We, we recognize that there are certain demographics. We know that in communities of colors, there are uh, challenges there. We also know in conservative social uh, circles, there are challenges there. So we've been very intentional in who we have uh, chosen to lead our efforts. We, we are working with uh, Pastor Sam of the National Baptist uh, Convention to reach into our Baptist network and some of our communities of uh, color. Also, we're working uh, with uh, Pastor Steve James. Pastor James is the pastor of Trinity Baptist Church, one of the largest uh, Southern Baptist churches in the uh, Southwest Louisiana. And uh, we're working with uh, Steve James. He is the executive director of the Southern Baptist uh, Convention here in Louisiana. We also recognize that there are other populations uh, that uh, need to be focused on today. David and I have met with the Hispanic apostolate here and those representing other uh, apostolates around the state in how we can uh, reach those folks. We did a webinar today with our Hispanic um, and, and Latino community on uh, Bring Back Louisiana, what we can do to increase vaccinations. We have initiatives here within the department to work with Native Americans and we're actually getting great results in, in that group there and other faith-based groups a while, a while back. Uh, about a month ago, we had a faith-based webinar where uh, we participated uh, with uh, persons who are of uh, Muslim faith, persons who are of the Jewish faith, uh, nonprofit organization. So that's our overall strategy to engage our faith-based community, tap into those faith leaders, ask them to build uh, community resources at the uh, local level. Now, this is, um, of course, we have uh, the FEMA Baton Rouge site here in, um, in, in the region two, uh, public health region two area. And what we try to do here is capture all of the activities that uh, we are doing here. I think someone needs to mute their phone there. Yes. All, of the, all of the activities that we're doing here in, in the greater Baton Rouge area to support that FEMA site. Uh, you may have heard that the goal is to get our numbers up in such a way that up to 3,000 people can get vaccinated a day and 21,000 people can get vaccinated uh, a week. These folks are using the Pfizer uh, vaccine and so folks will have to come back for a second uh, vaccination. If you look at the uh, chart here, it's pretty busy, but this is a comprehensive uh, effort. The larger blue circles on the outer side, this lets you know the uh, leadership teams from uh, East Baton Rouge, LDH, uh, Lang, Louisiana National Guard, and FEMA, we've all had to pull together to support this, uh, to support this site. And then you'll look at some of the initiatives. We have the faith-based uh, initiative that I talked to you before. Some of the social, uh, some of the media initiatives, you'll see those, Ali will talk a little bit about that, but we're also working with East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. So the goal is to try to get uh, all uh, 16 of those high schools uh, where kids are 16 and up and eligible for the Pfizer vaccine to get all 16 of those schools vaccinated prior to those folks, those kids going home for their uh, summer break. So as you can imagine, we're up against the clock in trying to get that completed. We're also working with LSU, Southern University, BRCC, to either uh, host uh, a, a, a spoke model whereby we can have a site there or to encourage those students to uh, go to that site for uh, vaccinations and then all of the other strategies that we're using. And so as Dr. Lavise said earlier, we've got to dig deep, we've got to think outside of the box and, and that's what we're trying to do here. Let's go David. The next one is, this is just some of the data uh, to date uh, related to the um, 
events. So we've, we've knocked almost 3,000 doors and spoke to nearly 18, uh, 1,900 people. We've handed out uh, over 5,000 door hangers. These are the phone calls I mentioned earlier, 17,000 texts and 105,000 pieces of mail that we've sent. All of our regional medical directors either have or are in the process of doing uh, recording robocalls that are gonna to go to every landline within those uh, targeted areas. And then on April the 8th, we stood up our COVID uh, vaccine hotline. This has been um, uh, one of the things, this has been awesome. One of the things we're very proud of, great success. To date, the hotline has received uh, 798 calls and that has led to 641 uh, vaccine appointments. In addition to that, uh, we've been able to make over 400, close to 450 referrals to medical professionals for those individuals seeking uh, medical advice as to whether or not they should take the vaccine data. So here's, here's what we have, um, some of the things that we've learned to date, and, and that's where we're gonna need you folks to give us feedback as well. The first thing is that, you know, as I talk about the numbers, that's, that's, that's quantity, and, and the goal is to, you know, cover these large swaths of uh, area and communities prior to the vaccination event. And so sometimes we can get caught up on just the numbers, but also there's a need for us to, to spend time having deep conversations. And so uh, not just looking at how many people we talk to, but the value. So you can talk to a thousand and 10 people get vaccinated, or you can talk to a hundred with deep conversations and 50. And so we're trying to balance what that uh, looks like uh, with the uh, social and medical uh, there are social and medical questions that need to be answered. As I mentioned earlier, we're doing the referrals to the, uh, to the hotlines with our canvassers when they come across that. Also within our churches, we know that, um, uh, especially as we talk to you know, the Hispanic uh, community, our, our, our Catholic churches, our Catholic brothers and sisters, and even some of the more conservative churches, there are challenges related to you know, the Johnson and Johnson. And so we're encouraging those folks to, um, just uh, uh, promote uh, vaccinations and there are enough vaccination, vaccines out there for folks to choose without people having to compromise you know, what their uh, convictions are. Also, that we need to continue to strategize around regional diversity, recognizing that one size does not fit all what works in this community, who are, is effective in this community may not be effective in other communities. We need to continue to work on educating our canvassers and we do recognize that incentives work. And so in trying to get folks out. So we're trying to create a buzz by working with uh, partners out there and, and uh, uh, utilizing those partners for in, in instances where partners have been able to uh, make donations and create incentives, we've seen a better uh, turnout there. And I believe, David, we have one more, uh, what's next? And so we have after action review, we don't have a whole lot there because uh, you know, we, we do our first testing this week uh, we, we're going to see what that uh, shapes up to be, and we'll go from there. Incorporating lessons learned from the pilot, what did and did not work. Uh, you know, what communities are willing to talk. Uh, we also know what we've learned is that those who were vaccinated, they're very eager to tell others about it. And so we have to use those uh, networks. We're planning uh, for our next sites. As I mentioned earlier, uh, when we chose the sites that we, we did, for our pilots, there were others that were under consideration. We're going back to those sites. We're bringing in our community-based organizations, regional medical directors, our media and faith partners, and we're gonna try and uh, do go start planning for our uh, next round. And then another thing, which was uh, uh, very popular feedback and, and one that we're gonna put a great emphasis on is utilization of uh, vaccination uh, mobile units. Uh, as with anything, you gotta strike while the iron is hot. And when people, say that they want to be vaccinated, and especially in uh, communities where access is uh, uh, an issue and so forth, we have to seize the moment. We, we would like to get those persons vaccinated at that time. And so folks, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm going to turn it over to Allie and then both of us are gonna team up and uh, take questions uh, from you. If that, is that okay, Dr. Brown? Absolutely. Thank you. Wonderful. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. Mark did such a comprehensive job. I'm, I'm going to walk through a couple of slides really quickly, um, and then we can open it up to questions because they were, we're mostly excited to hear from you all, hear feedback, and, and hear ideas for the future. So let me share my screen.
All right, can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, so. Okay, <clears throat> so just a reminder, we have several key communications goals that are part of this campaign. One is promoting the new, and should also add, thank you all for your partnership in, in making all of this happen. Um, we, we couldn't do it without you. One is promoting the new community vaccination center in East Baton Rouge. Um, and so we'll, we'll need your continued help there. Um, and as you saw from that really busy um, uh, slide,